Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about residuals and how to analyze them. So first of all, uh, when we make a scatter plot and then we draw in our line of fit or our line of best fit, the, the line that we draw is not going to go through all of our points in the scatter plot, right? We've talked about that, um, I've made some other videos about that. Um, so what we have now is there's going to be a difference between the data point, right, on our scatter plot and where our line actually goes through, right? So that's what a residual is. How far above or below are these scatter plot points from the line of fit that we have drawn? And so we can actually calculate a numerical value for that and we call it a residual. So right here we see that a residual is just the y value of the data point minus the y value from the model. And what we mean from the model is from the line of best fit, okay? Um, so we're gonna get an equation for our line of best fit and a couple examples we're gonna do here in just a minute. And we'll be able to plug in our x values and solve for y, and that'll give us our y value from our model. And then we have the y value from the data point, which is from our scatter plot. Okay. A couple things about residuals. A residual can be positive, negative, or zero. So positive if the residual is above the um, line of best fit, negative if the residual is below it, and zero if the, re if the point is on the line. Uh, once we find all of our uh, residuals, the, all the values, we can make a scatter plot of the residuals to see if the line of fit is a good model for the data. So once we make our scatter plot of the residuals, if the points that we plot are evenly dispersed about the x-axis, the horizontal axis, right, some are below it, some are above it, some are on the x-axis, then we would say that's a good fit, right? That line of fit that we drew fits well. It's a good model. A bad fit would be there's some type of pattern that suggests nonlinear data. So maybe the points that we plot are like in a, a U shape or a V shape, right? They're not evenly dispersed about the x-axis. Um, and then no correlation would just be wildly scattered residual points. So we have points that are just all over our graph. Um, it doesn't make sense, okay? So we're gonna look at a couple examples. Um, one of good fit and one of bad fit, all right? So it says, uh, the table shows the number Y of gloves sold for each amount X inches of snowfall. The equation y equals 1.5x plus 3.5 models the data. Is the model a good fit? Okay, so uh, we know it's gonna be a good fit because this is called example of good fit, but we're gonna see what will it look like when we find the residuals, um, and then down here at the bottom, we're gonna graph our residuals. Okay, so we have our table over here on the left, right? So for one inch of snowfall, five gloves, two, eight, three, seven, all the way down. So basically, I've just taken that table and we've made an XY table right here. So in this table on the right, we're gonna find the Y value from our model, which is this equation right here. That's our model. Um, and then we're gonna calculate what the residual would be, okay? So essentially, we're just gonna plug in these X values um, right here for X. So we're gonna multiply by 1.5 and then we're gonna add 3.5. Okay, so if I plug in one for X, 1.5 times one is 1.5 plus 3.5 is five, okay? And so now we can go down and do this. So then we're gonna have 6.5, then we'll have eight, then we'll have 9.5, we'll have 11, we'll have 12.5, and we'll have 14, okay? So how did we get those numbers? We took all of our X values here and we plugged them in for X in our equation and we just solved for Y, okay? So now we have two columns of information, our y values here from our scatter plot and our y value from our model. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract, and if we go back up here to the top, y value of the data point minus y value, y value from the model. So it's already in order. So here we're gonna do five minus five, so the residual would be zero. Eight minus 6.5, so the residual would be 1.5. Seven minus eight, so the residual is negative one. 10 minus 9.5, so the residual is 1 half. 11 minus 11, so the residual is zero. 12 minus 12.5, the residual would be negative 0 0.5. And 14 minus 14, so my residual would be zero. And so now what we can do um, is we can graph our x value, but with its residual, okay? So we can go down here to our, our graph. And so here's our x values remember, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and now we're gonna graph our residual values. So basically we're gonna graph one comma zero, all right? So this point would be right here, one zero. Um, X is two, Y is one and a half. 
So right there, uh, three, negative one, four, and one half. X is five, we have uh, residual of zero. When X is six, we had negative one half. And when X was seven, our residual was zero. And so now we look at our graph here, and we have um, points that are, go back to a good fit, evenly dispersed about the x-axis, right? So we have three points that are on the x-axis, we have two points that are above the x-axis, and we have two points that are below. So we would say, yes, this model right here is a good fit. Okay, so that's what an example of good fit would look like. All right, so let's look at an example of bad fit. <coughs> it says the table shows that ages x and salaries y in thousands of dollars of eight employees. The equation y equals 0.2x plus 38 models the data. Is the model a good fit? Okay, so once again, this is an example of bad fit, so we can expect, yeah, it's, it's not gonna be a good fit, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing. We have our table on the left, we have our x and y values um, right here, and we're just gonna plug in our x values into our equation to get our residual, or to get our y value from our model, and then we can subtract to find the residual. Once we do that, then we can graph them. Okay, so we're gonna plug in 35 right here for x. We'll plug 37 in, 41, 43, 45, 47, 53, and 55. So we do 0 0.2 times 35, and then we add 38. So this is gonna give us 45. And then we'll go ahead and go through here, 45.4, 46.2, 46.3, 46.4, 46.3, 46.4, 46.3. Forty-eight point six and forty-nine. So once again, how did we get those numbers? We plugged these x values right here, right there, right into that x value, and just solved to get the y value from the model. Okay. All right. So now for our residuals, we're going to subtract. So forty-two minus forty-five. This will be negative three. Forty-four minus forty-five point four. This would be negative one point four. 47 minus 46.2, this would be 0 0.8. 50 minus 46.6, this would be 3.4. 52 minus 47 would be 5. 51 minus 47.4 would be 3.6. 49 minus 48.6 would be 0 0.4. And 45 minus 49 would be negative 4, okay? So notice how our, our numbers are um, a lot bigger in this case than they were in the previous example. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph our residuals. So it's going to be the x value, but then now with our residual values as well. Okay, so when x is 35, the residual is negative three. So 35 would be here, negative three right there. 37, negative 1.4. So 37, negative 1.4, maybe somewhere right in there. Um, 47, 0 0.8. 47, no, excuse me, excuse me, 41, 0 0.8. So 41, 0 0.8, maybe right there. Um, 43 is 3.4, so 3.4, somewhere right in there. 45 is five, so it's gonna be here. Um, 47, when x is 47, the residual is 3.6, so 47, 3. Maybe a little bit above this one, 3.6. When x is 53, the residual is 0. 0.4. Um, maybe about right in there. Maybe a little less than that. About right there. And when x is 55, the residual is negative 4. Okay. All right, so notice how when we're looking at our um, graph of the residuals, how it, it's kind of like a U shape, right? So since we have that shape, this would suggest that this data is not linear, okay? So that means this model would not be a good fit or it would be a bad fit, okay? And that is what residuals are and that's how you analyze residuals.